Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. I'm in the car, as you can see. I'm, oh, sorry if it's bumpy. I'm on my way into Bath. If you would have seen my last vlog, you would know that oh, I said the podium car park was full. I thought I would film with you a lovely, uh, come, come book shopping with me. I'm doing some belated birthday book shopping, I guess, because I didn't ask for any books for my birthday. I just wanted to come and choose them and support, support some local independents. So you will see them from uh, the next clips coming up and then I will do a roundup of all my birthday books when I get back to Brighton. Hey guys, welcome back to the haul portion of my video. I really plan on getting like more clips and like talking and stuff, but honestly it was like the end of my trip and I was feeling quite tired and then I didn't end up using my chair in Bath because lovely Jen Campbell messaged me and let me know that the bookshops that she had been to, like they had steps and then I was like, oh, I'm just gonna try and walk, which was fine, but I just, um, was quite tired and like focusing on like choosing books and then like I, my best friend met us for lunch because she lives um in one city over and then by the end of that I was like poop so I'm sorry there wasn't many clips but <laughs> it is what it is but anyway I bought so many books I had the best time I think I've also got Tom's books in here so I might show you those um we went to two bookshops the first bookshop we went to was <coughs> toppings and then the second bookshop you would have seen was Mr B's Emporium these were both highly highly recommended I've been to a toppings before they are like an independent but I think there's four of them um and I've been to the one in Edinburgh and loved it so I was very excited also got the most gorgeous tote bag the people who worked there were so lovely I just had like the most wonderful time browsing around it was quite busy and I felt like honestly quite overwhelmed um because <laughs> I just, um, I guess, hadn't been in a bookshop for so long. My local bookshop that I've been into maybe like in November is really small and I felt like kind of awkward about browsing in it even when we were allowed back in them just because like there was always a queue of people and like, I don't know, I, I don't know. Um, it was busy, they didn't have like a ton of space but I didn't feel like unsafe at all. Obviously that's up for everyone to decide when whether or not they feel safe going into public spaces right now. Um, obviously we were masked up and, uh, you know, not touching loads of things or whatever. But anyway, I will show you the books I bought. I'm gonna try and remember where I got them from. Then I also have a separate stack of books that I was so kindly sent for my birthday from internet friends. So let me just separate those for you okay so the first books i bought in toppings were i went in with a list i sent the list to the hotties on the book chat the night before when everyone was awake being like guys this is what i'm gonna get like what do you think da, 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 da. i was like being really organized and then i got in there and was as i said very overwhelmed didn't really know what i wanted and then just started like picking up stuff from covers but i played this really fun game with my mum where we went around the tables and i like she doesn't really know about this points vaguely at the internet um she knows that like sometimes I get books from publishers um she thinks it's really cool because obviously as I've mentioned loads of times before she's a reader I wish I had her books because I picked out a set for her um 
that I knew that she would enjoy. She also bought some random classics. She like loves a good French, old French book, don't know. But um, I got some thrillers for her on Grace's recommendation. And so maybe I will either film when I'm next at her house when I'm getting treatment or I will take a picture and like do a little Insta story on what I chose for her. But anyway, this is a very rambly video. <laughs> Can you tell I haven't filmed in a while? Um, yeah, I like had a plan of what I was gonna buy and then I think I achieved most of it, but I didn't have some of the books I wanted. Anyway, I was in paperback, non, uh, paperback fiction browsing by Alphabet and I saw The Tide Was Owned by Sarah Moss. I loved Summer Water by Sarah Moss um, a couple of months ago, then I've already read Ghost Walk. So I think this is her only, is this her only other novel I haven't read? I wanna say yeah. No, Cold Earth, Night Waking, haven't read that. Bodies of Light, haven't read that. Okay, haven't read loads of her books. She also wrote Chocolate, a Global History interesting um i've read her non-fiction as well strangers for the sea which i love which is about her experience moving to iceland with her young family anyway this is her novel and this is a quite a lot longer than her other fiction that i've read but she does tension so 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 well i'm looking forward to this one because it's about a teenage girl who experiences a like a clap it like collapses and experiences like a fainting fit um her heart has inexplicably stopped so it says it reads like a defibrillator, a tidal zone reads like an electric shock of a defibrillator or the jolt of an EpiPen. So I think it's about illness and, um, you know, freak mystery events and that sort of thing, which as you probably know by now, is an interest of mine. I'm very interested to know if Sarah Moss has connection to um, this sort of like mystery illness herself or if she researched it. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to picking this one up I feel like it's one I will read like in a couple of days maybe if I have like some time off or in the summer holidays when I'm not studying so very much looking forward to this matte cover don't really love the girl but the font is fine I'm not that offended okay next up from toppings I picked up Aftershocks by Nadia Awusu this was in my books on my radar number one I want to say can we talk about how gorgeous this cover is? Although I sent it to one of my friends and they're like, that's so creepy. I absolutely love it. Love the passport format. I think it's way nicer than the USA and like international cover that I've seen. So this is a memoir. Also, the weirdest thing about toppings was they had like shrink wrapped. You can take it off, but they had like shrimp shrink wrapped all of their um hardbacks. And I don't know why. I'm guessing something to do with COVID, but like obviously they didn't wrap the paperbacks, but all of them were wrapped up like this. Please tell me if you've been into toppings before, if that's like a normal thing, or if they just decided to do it for COVID, even though they've just told us, haven't they, that um, it doesn't spread on surfaces, it's an airborne disease. Anyway, another ramble that you don't care about. So this is a memoir, which I, I guess would probably listen to, but for some reason this sounded like it was gonna be very fragmented, and sometimes I struggle with that on audio. I'm also not sure if it's out on audio at the moment. So her mother abandons her to flee from Tanzania to the US and then her father dies of cancer when she's a teenager. And it's about this idea of being like stateless, motherless, coming to terms with your identity. It had this really nice phrase where I'm searching for it for you. Oh, it's the um, tagline, dispatches from the front lines of identity. So she lives in lots of different countries because of her like family's work. Um, I believe it's something to do with the UN and she's exploring the fault lines of herself and understanding who she is in relation to the way she was brought up and that idea of your identity tied to a geographical place as well as to a familial place. And I'm really, really looking forward to this. I'm obviously on a memoir kick. When am I not on a memoir kick? But um, yeah, I'm really, really keen to get to this one, as I am with all of these books. Okay, next one I picked up really quite randomly, but I was just thinking on my shelves, I didn't really have a lot of like super short books. And when I'm unwell, like having a short book, like with a short attention span, I feel quite satisfying in reading. Not that I'm in some kind of race to compete, but just that um, I guess because when I'm really unwell and struggling to read, reading long books can be quite demotivating because I'm often forgetting what's happening or my long-term cogn cognition isn't working so well um, with brain fog and things. So like having a short book to complete sort of can get me out of those spaces and I really enjoy it. So 
This is Simple Passions by Annie Ernox by Fitzcarolda. I love everything that Fitzcarolda do. Love their concept, love their artwork, love the people I've spoken to that um, work there. Um, would love to publish a book with Fitzcarolda one day. I'll put that into the universe. Um, and this is a set of essays looking at her experiences <coughs> excuse me in a two-year relationship with a married man so looking at love and betrayal and it's translated by tanya leslie i'm not sure what language it's originally written in i'm gonna take a guess at french yeah because her previous novel won the words won the pre redoulo I'm going to say that's how you say it. It's like a literary prize in France. Um, and this is looking at the two-year relationship with the married man. Every word, event, person provides a connection with her beloved or her subject to her cold indifference. Hmm. A very slight book, as I said. Um, and I'm interested in desire and this idea of morality when it comes to romantic love and platonic love and where we draw these like arbitrary lines between human connection and who decides what's morally sound and what isn't. So yeah, I'm looking forward to picking that up probably like in an afternoon or an evening and powering through it. So that is Simple Passion. And then the last one was one that was on my list and of course inspired by my beloved hotties and that is The Death in Her Hands by Otessa Moshvig. I mentioned before that I have an arbitrary rule where I don't buy books by an author until I've read the books I have on my shelf by them. Does that make sense? So I had, I read and adored my year of rest and relaxation. And then I quite soon after bought Eileen, but I bought Eileen in the summer months. And if you haven't read Eileen, it's like a very cold wintry sort of book. It's set around Christmas time. So I didn't read that until the back end of last year. I was in December, 2020. So I was in the market for a new Moshvik and I decided to pick up The Death in Her Hands. It's about a protagonist who comes across a note about a dead body but the body isn't with the note and unfolds as a mystery of sort of you know conspiracy theories from the um, blurb it sounds a lot like drive your plow over the bones of the dead which I really enjoyed when I read that last year no two years ago um sort of like says her name was Magda nobody will ever know who killed her it wasn't me but here is her dead body so it was sensibly a bit thriller mystery s but maybe it's knowing Moshevik it's not going to be tied up in a neat bow and it's not going to necessarily follow that formulaic structure of um a atmospheric book that we would expect so I'm excited to give this a go although again it does sound like her books for some reason for me just like feel wintry so I probably won't get to this till the latter half of the year but I'm excited to have the next Moshevik ready to go on my shelves. I was also tempted to pick up, is it Homesick for Another World, which is her short story collection, but I actually have quite a few unread short story collections on my shelves, so I decided to go with her novel. Okay, that is what I bought from, <coughs> by the way, when I mean I bought, I mean so kindly my mother and Tom purchased them for me for my birthday, um, from toppings then we went to mr b's emporium which again the staff there was so lovely really loved it was feeling quite anxious at that point in the day like it was quite it was like a lot busier there and the names lanes are really narrow there was also a staircase so i think if i had to pick if you were going to go to one i would say go to toppings but i did enjoy mr b's as well and this is what i got a Life's Work by Rachel Cuss. Now, Rachel Cuss is like doing bits in the literary tiny echo chamber that we exist in at the moment. That we exist in. What I mean is like the 10 other booktubers that I watch and enjoy. Iggy, Rebecca, Ben, CJ, the gang, you know, you know. Um, but listen, I read Outline the year I moved to Brighton, so 2018, three years ago, I waited for it for ages from the library. It was like doing rounds on a bookstagram, like before I had a bookstagram account, when I would just like be reading what people were talking about, like very broadly, like on the high low or, you know, people just talking about books in mainstream culture and outline was, you know, raved about. It's her fiction, it's the first book in her fiction trilogy about this like writer that goes to Greece and it's very conversational, but, I found it so pretentious at the time. I think I would like 
I was also kind of mad that I waited so long for it out of the library. Anyway, everyone's having a Rachel Cross moment. So I was like, okay, do I read Outline again? And then CJ read it and was like, mm, no, like it's not that good. And she was raving before about her pre her newest books, A Second Place, which isn't out yet. CJ had an arc. And that's more plotty and it like has a real narrative, which I think would maybe lean away from the pretentiousness of it. This is such a ramble, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm just scatty brain today. Anyway, I was in the shop and I said to the guys, the guys, the hoddies, I'm going to buy Rachel Cross nonfiction because I feel like her writing style would suit me more in nonfiction. And then this appeared, a life's work. Funny, moving, brutally honest account of early motherhood. We know I love to read about motherhood. We know I want children one day. I love... Ugh, sorry, I just thought it was blurred by Suzanne Moore, who's a turf, if you didn't know. Um, we love Motherhood by Sheila Hetty, I'm Not Your Baby Mother by Candy Sprayport. Like, I just love reading about different experiences, motherhood particularly, in, like, quite a philosophical, thinking, meta way. So I'm very excited for this one. It says it's provoked acclaim and outrage. We love to see it. Also, the covers are banging, let's not lie. And it's published by Faber, so in Faber we trust. That's my Rachel Cusk run. Next up, oh, that was a good flip, wasn't it? Of Women and Salt by Gabrielle Garcia. Bit salty about this one, guys, because I requested it on NetGalley and they didn't get back to me. So it's fine. Grace read it, loved it. In Grace We Trust, so I got it. Blurred by Roxanne Gay, which I would say, like, yes, 10 out of 10, believe everything, believe the hype from Roxanne Gay blurbs it, but I come to realise recently with my friends that she blurbs literally everything so I'm not sure about that one but anyway this is a family multi-generational saga set in Cuba talking about a three generations of women starting back I believe as early as the 1800s yeah 1866 um a Cuban cigar factory and then we move to the 60s where they are um Castro is in power and they are talking about the resistance and then we move to present day where they are in Miami and experiencing um run-ins with ice and like deportation and all that sort of malarkey I absolutely adored infinite country in a vlog ago yeah my last vlog so I was like really in the mood to have one of these intergenerational family sagas that teach me about a specific part of the world america is not the heart comes to mind um yeah infinite country which else i haven't read pachenko but tom adored and i think i would if i got around to it and over my fear of big books um i'm trying to think which other ones i've read like this the most fun we've ever had that is about america but it's that similar like tight-knit family weave but talking about these macro issues on the on the ether and love it so and I'm surprised by how short this was for some reason I thought it was gonna be really long that's that one gorge cover 10 out of 10 and the final book I picked up which I guess like is sort of like obviously all these books are shared with my darling Tom but this one we like picked up together and I wanted to you know have a cheeky cover by and I was saying that like it's really hard to cover by when you spend so much time thinking about books and I do have a weird memory for images where I can just I can see covers and know what they were even if I haven't read it or have heard that many people talk about it so this was my cover by from Mr B's Emporium they had like a really good hall of fame shelf upstairs where people had the little cards that they were recommending the red story the red love a story of an east german family by Maxime Leo published by Pushkin which is like a cool indie press and it's a look at a it's a memoir of Maxim Leo and his parents growing up in East Berlin his parents were like rebels resistance you know pro socialism all those things and he's backtracking through his family's experiences finding out why his parents got divorced why his dad became so angry and his mother quit her career in journalism and why his grandfather was a socialist war hero who then turned into a family stranger. So again, family secrets. I think it's going to be a tiny bit like... Oh, it's got pictures. We love a memoir of pictures. Um, House of Glass by Hadley Freeman, who's also a turf. How upsetting. Um, that was her memoir of 20th century Jewish family and like backtracking through her grandmother's experience as a refugee in World War II and... That was super, super interesting. 
so I'm excited to read this and learn more about Berlin because when I read Love in Five Acts a couple of vlogs ago I said I didn't know enough about the Berlin Wall falling and that sort of era of German politics so I'm hoping it'll be a good one. Okay books I was sent for my birthday by Steffi from Perks of Steph so kindly sent me these books because she loves me. So the first one I'm so excited for, if you've watched Steffi's vlog, you would have seen her talking about this. Hello, I Want to Die, Please Fix Me by Anna Mailer Paperney. Um, I wanted to read this for ages since I've heard her talk about it. And then I've even had it on my radar before that when I was looking at books about depression, when I made a memoir video yonks ago now talking about Shoot the Damn Dog, which is one of my favourite memoirs on depression. But this is published by an indie either in America or Canada, the Experiment Press it's called, and it's so hard to find in the UK, so Steffi sent me one, which is amazing and kind of her, and it's about depression and the cultural and social history of understanding mental ill health and how we can, I guess, strive to make our mental health treatment more inclusive and have autonomy for people that are struggling and I'm just so 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 looking forward to this also oh, we love a floppy American cover it's delightful Tiny Moons A Year of Eating in Shanghai by Nina Mingyan Powers Jen from Jen Campbell has spoken loads about this I follow Nina for ages on Twitter and I don't know why I've never bought this because it's an essay it's essays on food and home and uh, geographical belonging and it's got cute illustrations and it's another tiny book perfect for a sick day so it looks at childhood snacks family feasts and shanghai street foods and attempt to make her way back to her chinese malay heritage doesn't that sound wonderful darling cover very excited and another indie press <coughs> sitting at pretty the view from my ordinary resilient disabled body by rebecca Towsing. you would have seen me read this already I listened to it on audio. I absolutely adored it. I am so happy that Steffi gave me a physical copy because I have bookmarked loads of sections on the audiobook and my favourite thing to do is like go back and underline them and then when I pass this on to friends they can see the bits that meant so much to me. This may even top disability visibility for the most accessible and jump best jumping off point for learning about uh, life in a disabled body. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to read what Rebecca does next because it's definitely up there with like top three best books I've read on illness and disability. So thank you, Rebecca. And thank you, Steffi, for a physical coffee. And the final book she got me is What Doesn't Kill You, A Life with Chronic Illness, Lessons from a Body in Revolt by Tessa Miller. Tessa Miller has Crohn's um, disease and this is about her experiencing uh, with the medical system, with illness, living in a sick body as a young person, all those things I blabber on to you guys about and I want to keep writing about, so I'm trying to read more about it so I can look at it in like a structural and from a form point of view to know that what I would like to write and bring something new to the table. So that's that one. And the final book I was sent by Gorgeous Marianne, one of my friends on Bookstagram, and that is Inferno, a memoir of motherhood and madness by Catherine Cho. This is up for the Jalak Prize where I first heard about it and then Grace read it and loved it. I love me a memoir, I love me some motherhood. It's about postpartum psychosis, um, her experiences being an inpatient and I think involuntarily held on a ward and it's like a collection of her diary, her um, notes, her family's recollections of those experiences and what she learned from, uh, I guess, being an inpatient, which I'm very much looking forward to, although I think it'll probably be quite upsetting and maybe even hard to read in places but that is what I'm looking forward to. Tom also built three books but I think I'm just going to get Tom to show them to you when he next comes on the vlog. Thank you so much for watching this very hectic video guys. I will see you in another one soon. Bye!